Hello everyone, I want to share with you a story that God has placed on my heart uh, to share with all of you. It comes from the book of Acts, the 16th chapter. So today's story begins with two men that many of you may know about, and their names are Paul and Silas. So Paul and Silas one day are going to find a place so that they can pray, um, maybe a synagogue, a place of worship, and their only intent was to go to pray. And it says in God's Word that they encountered a woman with an evil spirit. And what she did, she was like a fortune teller. And she began to cry out in a loud voice saying, Everyone pay attention to these two men because they can show you the way. You would think, wow, you know, she's telling everybody and proclaiming what Paul and Silas were doing. You'd think that would be a good thing. But Paul became so troubled because he knew that like, even the demons believe in God. So he knew that what she was saying didn't come from the right spirit. And it says in God's word that she had an evil spirit. And what she did was to earn money for other people. So one day, this went on for several days. And so one day, Paul decides to say, enough. So he confronts her and he tells the evil spirit that's within her to come out of her. And it says in God's word that evil spirit left her immediately. But whenever that evil spirit left her, it doesn't say what happened to her at that point, other than she was no longer able to make money. Well, when she can't make money for the people that were in charge of her, they were, became very angry. So in the day that that happened, they drove Paul and Silas into the courts of the city. And they had magistrates and judges there, and they were proclaiming that Paul and Silas were there and they need to be condemned because they were creating a problem for everybody because they were proclaiming and talking about Jesus. So the whole crowd that was there witnessed what was going on. At the same time, they were being held accountable for this. They were judged and found guilty and the whole crowd wanted them sentenced. And so they were flogged and beaten and stripped naked all because they were proclaiming Jesus Christ. So would you believe that really they woke up this day thinking that they were going to pray, but God was going to use them not only to cast out the demon in this lady and free her from that demon, but also they would be dragged into court and accused of being a follower of Jesus Christ. So next thing you know, they're commanded to be sent into a prison. And while they're in this prison cell, they're told the people that are in charge of them are actually told to shackle their feet. So their feet and hands are all shackled. So you're thinking, wow, they've been beaten and they've been shackled and they're in a dark dungeon. Gosh, would you believe that that was a good thing? A good thing from God. Not only to cast out the demon, but to be sentenced and judged, but also be cast out in prison. It says in God's word that about midnight, that Paul and Silas were singing praises to the Lord. How bizarre. How many of us, if we were beaten and thrown in a dark, damp dungeon and shackled, would be singing praises to the Lord? But it says in God's word, that's exactly what they were doing. Because they were being faithful to who God created them to be. And they knew their lives depended on the Lord Jesus Christ anyway. So... What happens is about midnight, they said there's a giant earthquake and all the doors fly open. So, and all the shackles fall off of them. And they're still standing there. But what happens is the lead guard recognizes, he's afraid, he wakes up and realizes, oh gosh, these people are all gonna escape and I'm gonna be killed by the king because I've allowed them to escape. So he takes out the sword and he's actually gonna kill himself with a sword. But what happens is Paul and Silas says, don't do that. Don't do that because we are all still here. All the prisoners were there. So this, this man decides he's gonna fall on his face. He comes to where Paul and Silas are. He falls prostrate on the floor and says, what must I do to be saved? What is it that I must do? You see, he didn't have any idea of, gosh, do I need to go to church every day? 
Do I need to pray every day? In fact, his response was so unusual, you would have thought, gosh, there would have been a whole bunch of other questions he could have asked. But instead, he asked the most important one. What must I do? And all Paul and Sala said is believe that if you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your household will be saved. See, it wasn't a list of Paul and Silas telling this guy, you know what? You need to clean up your act. You need to try harder. You need to start doing good things. It was none of that. They said, believe on the Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. So it goes for the same for us. See, a lot of people are going to church thinking, oh, well, going to church is going to save me because I'm doing what God expects me to do. And then some people believe, well, you know, I'm praying every day, so that's going to save me. But all of that, all of that is good works. And it's actually from the enemy because even the demons know who God is and they know who Jesus is, but that didn't save their soul. So you're like, well, what does it take to do that? So if I'm praying every day, if I'm reading my Bible every day, if I'm going to church every day, if I'm giving to the poor, what must I do to be saved? Because surely God counts all that as good things. But it says in God's word that for by grace we are saved, not by works, lest anyone should boast. So it's all based on what? Because if we're doing good works, we're saying that Jesus' death on the cross means nothing. But that's not what God's Word said. God's Word said that He came and bled and died for each of our sins. So the only way for us to be saved is to recognize we can't save ourselves, that we have done wrong, that our sin, our sins have separated us from God. The sin of lying, or being disrespectful to our parents, or stealing, or murdering. We're like, oh, we don't, we haven't murdered anybody, but it says in God's Word that if we have been angry with our brother, we have committed murder. So it's not based on my opinion, but it's on God's standard. And he is a holy standard. He cannot let one speck of sin enter into heaven. So you're like, gosh, I can't be perfect. What can I do? It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess. Say, you know what? I have I've committed sin. I have separated myself from God because I've wanted to live my life my own way. But also it says to turn from our sins and repent and believe that Jesus Christ has paid for our sins. He was in the tomb three days and God raised him from the dead. And it says, if you will believe that in your heart, confess that with your mouth, you shall be saved. So it all goes back to what do we believe? Do we believe that our good works, the things that we do well, is going to give us to heaven? Do we believe that we've done too many things wrong and God's grace won't cover it all? Or will we believe, as God had said, that He sent His only Son to die for our sins, pay the price for our sins and be raised from the dead in order to allow us to have eternal life with Him forever?